Hello, and welcome to my talk about a web-based framework for the exploration of heterogeneous spatial big brain data called BrainTrawler. My name is Florian Gangiberger, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Biomedical Image Informatics Group at the Wierwies Research Center in Vienna. Um, to see where the behavior or function takes place in the brain and how genes control this behavior, you can, instead of taking the time expensive way over experiments, um, use spatial data from large scale brain initiatives to map behavioral gene expression data to brain regions and networks. The data we use here is from the Allen Institute and consists mainly of spatial gene expression data of 20,000 genes for mouse and human. This allows researchers to draw a conclusion about which function a certain brain region has and which molecular mechanisms might be involved. Here, for example, we see the gene expression, the voxel level gene expression of one gene in the mouse brain and on a regional level in the human brain. Furthermore, we use connectivity data of various modalities and types, which can be generalized to um, uh, weighted edges sensi metrics. Here in this matrix, the rows um, represent the outgoing connectivity of one voxel um, or brain region and the columns, the incoming connectivity of one voxel or brain region. What we also have is anatomical data for spatial context. So we have a hierarchical neuroanatomical ontology that is mapped to an anatomical reference space, which can be used to parcelate um, the brain by um, brain regions. This leads us to our central resource question, how to explore spatial gene expression and multimodal brain connectivity data in a joint manner in the anatomical context. Visual analytic tools represent a promising approach to mine this data for deeper insights in the functional organization of the brain. If we want to do this interactively, um, there are some challenges, like the size of the data, such a network with billions of edges can have hundreds of gigabytes, and also large collections of spatial brain data does not simply fit into your, into your RAM. Also, this data has, is on different scales and can have different modalities. To see where genes affect brain networks, we have to view spatial data. Here we see the gene PKC delta, which is relevant for the reward system, but also um, plays a role in bipolar disorders or drug abuse. Here, a neuroscientist um, will focus on a specific brain region he wants to study. To see where the gene might also influence the brain regions, at the brain region, he needs to study regions that are connected somehow um, to this region. Um, we can do this with so-called aggregation queries, um, which is basically um, an, um, an aggregation of all the rows that are, uh, that are of all the voxels that are um, in this volume of interest. Um, so you aggregate this here and you get back um, another volume, which represents the connectivity um, on a voxel level of this volume of interest. Um, therefore, we published a data structure for real-time aggregation queries in 2019, which uses spatial indexing techniques. Um, it enables such a query on a matrix with hundreds of gigabytes in an instant. This can be also performed on region level data that is automatically mapped to this voxel level. Um, to make use of these queries, um, we created BrainTrawler, a web-based visual analytics tool for target phishing, a term frequently used by neuroscientists when looking for specific connections or genes that they want to target in subsequent ex uh, experiments. It shows here um, the voxel level structural connectivity of this yellow area as, a, as this green point cloud and on a regional level as this graph um, overlaid. It also has here quantitative information in this bar graph where every bar represents the mean expression in um, these brain regions. Um, you can also explore this on different anatomical um, levels. So you see here um, that we change here um, the, the, the regions of interest. We split up here the thalamus, which also has a direct effect on our visualization. Um, we can also compare different networks indicated here as green and blue. We have here the bar graph aligned so you can directly compare and we can compute an overlap by just the multiplication of the, of the individual edge weights. So you see um, in the, the red graph um, basically where both to which brain regions both connections have a, have a high connection. Um, we can also use brain trawler for network dissection. Um, since um, this involves querying spatial gene expression, 
of 20,000 genes, we employed spatial indexing using space filling curves. In this index, we stored gene expression per voxel across um, all genes in the data set. So we can then ask um, which genes are expressed in a certain part of this network. So here we perform a so-called gene expression query, which retrieves us all genes that have expression in a volume of interest. Here, for example, we have this volume of interest is in, in, in yellow. We retrieve a list of genes um, ordered by their expression. So we see um, which genes are relevant for this area. We also performed an aggregation query, um, which gives us the outgoing connection. And if we perform a gene expression query again on the strongly connected um, areas here, we retrieve a second list. Um, by comparing this list in a parallel coordinate system, um, um, we can basically see um, how different how uh, how genes are relevant for different parts of this network. Um, major contributions here is uh, real-time queries of large-scale spatial networks, um, which allows an instant retrieval of connectivities across scales. We also showed a visualization and comparing multimodal connectivity on different scales, and also a genetic dissection of networks. What is interesting now is our ongoing work. Um, we started a collaboration with the group of Francesc Fernandez at uh, Böhringer in Ingelheim. The idea we had was to integrate and harmonize bulk RNA and single cell RNA datasets. Those datasets have an information about the expression of genes in specific cell types. So they add an additional layer of detail. So we can now say the gene is not only expressed in this brain region, but also for this cell type, but not for another. So we basically don't have one data set, like from this, from the, this um, expression data from the Allen Institute, but multiple ones. This allows us interesting um, uh, types of, of queries here. Like, um, for example, we look at the gene that we had before, PKC Delta. So we see, get a list of all the, the data sets and cell types it has is expressed, which can also be visualized here in this nice heat map. Like we see here um, on the columns, different brain region, and we see here in the rows different cell types and data sets, and we see directly, oh, this gene has a high expression in this cell type and this brain region. Um, but with expression queries, it is also possible to do this on a genome level, similar to our genetic dissection. Here we have three different brain regions and three different data sets showing um, um, the Allen uh, brain atlas expression and um, the expression from a different data set in astrocytes. Here we selected high expression in the Allen Institute. And so we can basically see that um, in this cortical region here in green, we have a high expression, um, um, which is not really specific um, for um, astrocyte specific cell types, also in different brain regions. So um, that's it. Thank you for attention. And um, are there any questions?